we got this early 70s. I'm a guessing 1970 to 1973. Massey Ferguson. 253 rototiller. Now, this thing's been sitting for about 15 years in a shed. From where I picked it up and what the guy told me. Very simple machine to use. You got your throttle and engine control here. This is your tine control to turn your belt tension on to run your tines. Now there's a, from what I understand, if I remember correctly, it's a gear drive, but there's also a chain inside here that drives that. Now, what makes me believe this is a early 70s, well, being the case, if this is a 70, 73, most of these three horse Briggs engines on these will what? And this appears to be a 80 style Briggs engine. Now, I could use a hand out there from some of my Massey Ferguson gurus. This is a tag. Anybody knows how to uh, decipher the serial number on here. See, it has a registration number. I don't think that means anything. Maybe it does. You tell me. But I kind of like to know for sure what year this little guy is. Now, I've, I've seen these rototillers and swap meets and they go for a pretty good nickel, but this is not something uh, I'm gonna sell. This is something I wanna keep for myself to use in my own garden. But we'll go ahead and see if we can get this little guy to rattle off here. First thing I wanna do is uh, I wanna see if this little guy's got some fire to it at all. So we'll go ahead and put our, put our handy dandy spark plug tester on here and See if we got a Christmas tree light or not. Yeah. I'm gonna have to take and pop that belt off this thing because the belt, it doesn't appear to have the correct belt on there because when I pull this rope, that thing should not want to take off on me. I'm not seeing any spark on it. Not that I'm surprised. I'm gonna pop this cover off here and we're gonna pop that belt loose. Get this belt guard off. Take that belt off this thing so a little bit safer and it doesn't want to take off on us when we start it up. No spark on this guy. We've been doing so good and getting lucky on some stuff that we got spark and now we got one we don't we gotta work on. This is actually this would be a cool one here to restore actually. I have to get a hold of uh folks over click it and stick it and see if they can uh make me some new production decals for this. If anyone can do it, they can. I've been told these uh, roller tillers here, they're, they're valuable and there's not a whole lot of them around. Well, I can see that. There's not a whole lot of this old 70s stuff around anymore. I know. Some of you out there probably like, well, geez. You ought to just take and restore that and set it up on a shelf. Well, I kind of want to use it and work it. You know, these uh, these machines were built better than this new stuff they got. And I don't have a very big garden anyway, so it'd probably do it some good to work it again. Get those tines all shined up on it. Oh, yeah. We're going to be putting a different belt on this guy, that's for sure. Look at that belt. That belt is dry. Well, let's just go ahead and roll this guy off here since we roll that belt off since we know it's a problem anyway. And of course, come on now. There we 
go. Now she rolls off there. All right, now I feel a little more comfortable working on that. Again, we ain't got no spark. Nope. Well, you know what that means. That means we gotta pull all this apart and get in there and check the points out and clean them up and well, hopefully uh, we're gonna make something happen with this. Yeah, I suppose we better get busy on this. Alrighty, not too dirty in there. Ooh, got the old air vein governor on here. That's a yeah. We'll go ahead and we'll clean all that out of there. I suppose while we're right here. Well, we'll see. If can blow this chrome socket up here with my impact gun here. Should be all right. It's not like this is torqued on to a hundred foot pounds. But I don't like that when the clutches like to come apart like that. Whew. Good thing I caught that. Ooh, what a mess. Yep. That sucks when that happens, but. Uh, we'll fix it. Hit this with a little PB blaster. <sighs> well, hopefully this flat wheel is going to play nice. Get my pry bar in here. <sighs> Got me my brass hammer. Well, kind of figured this thing might be a problem to get in there. Try that again. There we go. That came off rather easy. Flywheel key ain't all busted on it, so that's a good sign. Yeah, I suppose if I get too carried away here, I'm going to take the old blow gun here and blow this out real good. I might not wash that. It don't look too bad. I really don't. Want to get water inside that points cover. All right, there we go. We got that all blowed out. That way we're not walking in the spider webs. Oh, well, looks like there's some moisture that got inside there. Well, you can see right there a little bit of the corrosion. So I guess what I'm going to do at this point right now, I'm just going to get me some uh, electric contact cleaner in there, spray and wash that down. And Rotate this over and make sure the plunger's working on there. No, it's not. That means this little plunger in here is sticking. Probably because it got wet and it's sticking. Well, take a spray a little PB blaster down there. We got to get this thing working again. No wonder why 
Didn't have spark, nothing opening and closing the points on it. There we go. Now I'm starting to get some movement out of it. There we go. Now the next step here is to get those points sanded up. Mm -hmm. We'll regap them. Blew that thing out and I made myself a mess down here. So I'm kind of working in the dirt. I'm taking taking a broom real quick and swish that out real quick. There. That way it don't look like I've been out crawling in the onion, fe onion fields weeding onions. Flashlight there so I can see a little bit better. Yeah, that plunger's was a stuck there for a minute, but she's uh doing plunger things right now. So now the next thing we gotta do is we gotta sand these points up here. Go ahead and we'll take care of that situation. And there we go. It's got me a little piece of uh 220 emery cloth. Lightly sand this guy up. Get my knickers in there to hold this thing open to get the sandpaper in there. There we go. Well. Yeah, now it might be too much of a gap there. I gotta tighten this condenser up so I can give myself a, a little bit of resistance on there to sign us up a little bit. There we go. Now I can get a stab at it and get some uh, sanding action on there now. What I gotta do now is I gotta get this thing rolled over. We gotta get the gap set on this guy. Okay, right there. We'll grab my feel gauges. Now. I'm going to set this at 20 thousandths. That's what Briggs calls for. Kind of. This is kind of tricky in a way to do this. because I'm trying to hold everything in place so it doesn't move. There we go, I might have got it. Okay. Now that's a little on the big side there, not what I want right there. Okay. See, I can kind of once I get it where it's close, I can kind of manipulate a little bit and put it where I want it and tighten her up. There we go. Alrighty. Mm, Twenty thousands. I don't think I could 
That looks pretty darn good to me. All right, now let's see if she closes. There we go. Yep, she's closing. Oh, you all see that now? Now we got movage now. Say our plunger there that's running off that crankshaft there. She's doing plunger things now. All right, now the next thing is this doesn't even have the right spark plug in it. So we better get that swapped out and get the, the right one in it. Yeah, the spark plug they had in it was actually out of a small block Chevy, an older one. What are y'all having to drink right now? What are we all having to drink watching me work on this? Feel free to put a comment down below. What are y'all drinking out there today? Usually I'm drinking a Sprite Zero or coffee. Now well, maybe y'all drinking beer out there. That's all that's all good too. Well, get this cover back on. Yeah, what's all your favorite drinks out there? My favorite pop is Sprite Zero. I know you shouldn't be using impact going on that small of a bolt there, but you see, I just ran it in, stopped, and I'm doing the rest of it with a nut driver, so yeah, ain't no harm done there. We're all good. Now, I get this flywheel put back on. I'm going to have to fix that uh, recoil that blew apart on me and it came apart. That was real nice of it to do that for me. If I ain't got no things to do here, had to do that. All right. Now, all right. Now, I'm just going to take some contact cleaner and spray these little ball bearings in there and Ideally, you want these things to stay dry. All right, now we need, we're not where we need to be. So we'll go ahead and put this fellow back on here. Spin it back on. So you just gotta think, gotta be careful not to pop that back off again. Lose those ball bearings. That's just that's just not no good and that happens. All right. All right now, put this on. Put the Take and put the Macho Man Randy Savage on there. Oh, yeah. You, can you dig it? All righty. Now, put a retaining screen on there. Looks like so. taking oil this uh this air vein up a little bit probably been a sun and a moon since it's had some lubricant on it's 
recoil here. Imagine that, we got a recoil here that ain't screwed up like some of them are we've had. Alrighty. Well, let's see if we can get some Christmas tree lights out of this now. Oops. Hey, how about that? Y'all see that? All right, we got a spark on her once again. Yeah, that's good news. All right, that's back on. Now being this, this motor's been sitting for 15 years, I just don't want to go firing this thing up and uh, I want to spray some PB blaster down here in the cylinder so it's got some lubrication like so Check the oil in here, make sure she's got oil before we start doing too much more. Ooh. Uh, yeah, this thing is really down in oil. So we're going to have to put some in down there. Wow, can't even touch it. My finger ain't in there. That's not good. Take put a little bit of this uh, 10W30 in here for now. Still really low on oil. Wow. Makes me kind of wonder if this thing was drained when they parked it. It'd be kind of a not so smart thing to do in a way, but at least we caught it. And that would have been pretty disastrous starting this thing up it didn't have any oil in it all right that problem's straightened out well now we got fire our next trick what we got to do is now we got to check out the fuel system on here see what we got to make happen with this Uh, now this this type of carburetor right here has got the little diaphragm inside of it. Sometimes these will start up and run after you mess with them. And other times you got to pull them apart and put a kit in it. So we're going to find out what this guy's going to be. Oh, and there's old gas down there in the bottom. Well, on a good note, the tank ain't rusty, so that's not a bad thing. Huh. Well, let's get this gas sucked out of here. Get my little turkey baster out and suck this out. Oh my gosh. That fuel is nasty. Look at that I'm pulling out of there. Yeah, that fuel ain't no good. Fifteen year old fuel. Looks like apple cider. One would think it ain't going to run very good and this carburetor is going to have issues, but 
I thought that before with some of this stuff and you know, it's like uh what was it that it's 71 bf good wrench push more we did same type of carburetor and after i messed with it she did settle down I'll start out put some fresh wreck fuel in here. Whoops. Don't spill it on the floor just like I just did though. That's probably I say that's probably a dollar's worth of gas with today's prices. All right, throttle and everything works on it okay. Well, I'm gonna grab some starting food here just a minute. This has the choke that you pull out on it. Uh, we'll do this, give it a hit of snort of laughing gas. See how many times I follow the spark plug out of it, of course, with uh, all that PB blaster I sprayed down the cylinder. Okay. She won't run. Come on. Come on, recoil. Yeah. Get that recoil clutch to work again. Come on, baby. Come on, recoil. Okay, so you're gonna run now. Get my little gas handy here. Let's see if she runs on joke. Ouch. No, nope, she still needs a snort every now and then. Ah, wasn't quick enough. Ah, yeah, catch that just right. She will run, she's just being a little stubborn. Probably got all that gunk inside the carburetor. Gotta get loose. Get this fella build up, get some compression in it. Ah, 
wasn't quick enough. Now if I can keep this thing running long enough, that diaphragm, this might start picking up fuel again. There we go. Come on, recoil. Might have to add a little more in that tank, we'll see. Yeah, that, that should be enough for it to pick up. I just took it a minute to pick up like I figured it would. Well, how about that? She don't run too bad, does she? After 15 years. So, I don't have a new belt for this thing, so I put the old belt back on it for now. We're going to try to get this up and at least see if we can get the time spinning on this until I can get a new belt. Well, the times do work on it, as you can see. I am going to have to get a new belt for this thing. Uh, get a belt the next size bigger than this. That's what it needs. Well, she does run. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this thing up and just let her sit out here and idle. That way that fuel pump diaphragm can start getting a little bit more pliable moving that fuel through there well there you have it everyone after 15 years this little massey ferguson 253 tiller she's up and running again uh gonna i'm like i said i'm just gonna take put some gas in this thing let it sit out there and run for a while maybe put a little bit of k100 in it and let it circulate through that carburetor and see if we can revive it or not and well 
if it's if it's not going to straighten out, it's just, it's just a matter of just pulling this carburetor apart, cleaning it out, and putting the diaphragm kit in. It's not complicated. Um, I'm going to have to get the right belt for this thing. So we'll come back and do a follow-up video on this one once I get everything all tuned and dialed in, and we can take it out in the garden and start working it. So, But until next time, I want to say, hey, I appreciate every one of you for stopping by, checking this out. Um, if you're new to this channel, I'd like to give you a welcome. We have a playlist of all kinds of different things such as this. Will it run again? We got some farm all tractor videos. Uh, we got some uh, restoration stuff, some garden tractors restored. Uh, check it out. You might find something in there you're liking. Feel free to leave a like or a comment down below if you're liking this kind of content. And if I could convince you to subscribe, that'd be excellent. Until next time, I'll see you in my next video. Take care, everyone.